Now, let us move on to the next model that is features of planning. I have listed out the points here. The first one being planning focuses on achieving objectives. Second one being planning is the primary function of management. Third one being planning is pervasive. Fourth one being planning is futuristic. Fifth one, planning is continuous. Sixth one, planning involves decision making. And the seventh one being planning is a mental process. Now let us take out the points one by one. First one, planning is focusing on achieving your objectives. As we all know, we have already spoken about this here that it contributes to the achievement of what? Achievement of predetermined objectives. So the objectives are already set. You know what is your future course of action. Where are you going to lead or what are you directed towards achieving that ultimate objective. So in this feature, the broad objective or the goals, the broader objective or goals are determined and based on that broad objective or goals, we develop plans. So we need a base for planning and the, this objective provides a base for our planning. We know why are we planning to achieve that particular objective. So once the objectives are set, you know where you have to give your directions to, where you have to move. Once you know where you have to move or what you have to target at, can you choose for your course of action? Now here, when you are choosing the organizational goals, it has to be efficient and effective. Only then can it be successful. So when you have planned, whatever planning you do, you have to see that under your planning, you are going to achieve the organizational goal, how? Efficiently and effectively. Now, if a student wants to score on 95 percent, as we have already told earlier, that you have set up your uh, goal, you have set up your aim, it's good. But are you moving towards your goal? That has to be seen. If only you are moving in the right direction to achieve your target, can you be successful? Otherwise, you may shortfall somewhere. So same in an organization, when they are targeting, so if as a, as a sales, um, sorry, sales manager, I am targeting at reaching 10 crores sales. Is it sufficient that I just set up a target? I know, okay, I am going to reach the target of 10 crores. How? Your, what's your plans? What is your course of action? Have you selected the best one? Looking into all the consideration. Being a salesperson, he has to look into the taste, the preferences of his consumers. So depending on the taste and preferences, what are the demand, what type of product does his customer or his consumer want. So looking into their needs, he has to cater to their needs. Only then he can improve or increase his sales. Otherwise, he is going to shortfall in reaching the target. So the very first step that is planning focuses on what? Focuses on achieving objectives. Second one, let's move on to the second one. Planning is the primary function of management. As we all have studied in the first chapter itself, how many functions are there? There are five functions. Which are those? Planning, organizing, directing, controlling, okay? These are the, the, these are the functions. Under those particular function and uh, staffing, left out with one, that was staffing. Of these five functions, you give prime importance, the first importance to what? To planning. Without pro proper planning, 
without the planning being successful, no other functions can go on smoothly. So at in every function, the first preceding function, the primary function would be planning. For example, if you're just going to take up staffing, you need staff requirements, okay? A stipulated number of staff, you, you need it. Now for that, you have to plan. For that particular job, if you're recruiting people, for that particular job, how many staff you want to hire or engage or get employed. Once you have decided, then you have to do a proper chalking out of plans has to be done. Otherwise, you appoint more number of people than the requirement, what happens? It's going to go waste. In the previous importance we had discussed, to avoid overlapping and repetitions, and to avoid wasteful activities, you have to have proper planning. So once you know your staff requirement, only uh, the exact number, how many staff you need, uh, want, you try to recruit people. So in staffing it is needed. In organizing, if you want to, for example, you want to select an organization structure, it's divisional, functional, what, so what type of structure you need to put up, you have to plan well in advance, depending on what is the ultimate objective or the ultimate what production or manufacturing is going on within your organization. Depending on that, you have to just look into what are the levels of management you need, okay, from the top level to the lowest level in that particular. So looking into the levels of management, you decide, want to take a decision as to what type of organization structure you are going to set up. For that too, planning is needed. So in every step, before any other function can, put a, can be put into action, you need planning. Now, your base as students, what was your base? Your primary section, your lowest level. Unless and until you have completed your lowest level of education, that the primary education, that has to be strong. Only when your primary education is strong, can you move forward in the current right direction to the upper classes. If the base is not strong, you cannot have command over that particular subject. Now as PUC students, when you have taken up commerce as your stream, accountancy and business studies was totally a new subject. Little of economics, little of history, little of mathematics, other subjects you had a little base in your lower classes. But when you're looking into the subject of uh, business studies and accountants, it's a totally new subject. So unless you've got a strong foundation in your PUC level, unless and until you get a strong foundation, you cannot be strong in that subject when you move on to the higher classes. So planning overcomes all as a primary function of management. The third one being, planning is pervasive. What is pervasive? It is nothing but planning is needed for all sorts of business activities. Any department you take, any activity you take, planning is needed. May it be the purchases section, may it be the sales department, May it be the marketing department, may it be the finance department, whichever department you take or whatever activities you take, planning is a must. So you, it is irrespective of the field or the departments because planning is there in every field and in every business activity. Now, if you're planning to have your annual day celebrations. Okay. You have to set for a program. Do you think it's going to work on without pl proper planning? No. From the very basic step, it begins with the formal function followed by the cultural program. Now in the formal program or the cultural program, both planning is needed. Well in advance, once the date is fixed, the date for your annual celebrations are fixed. 
you have to decide as to how you're going to chalk out the program. For that, what is needed? Planning is needed. Who is to be allotted with what job? Who is going to be the MC of the day? Who is going to give the introduction speech? Who is going to give the welcome speech? The vote of thanks? Inviting the guests? So there are so many things involved in organizing a program and you have to chalk out or plan out properly so that the fun function becomes a success. So whichever stream, whichever activities, whichever department you take, what is needed? Planning is needed. Moving on to the next one, we tell planning is futuristic. Planning is futuristic. What does it mean? The name itself is suggesting future, looking ahead. You are not looking, past you take as an experience for you. Your past, you take it as an experience. The, go, the good things and the bad things, the positives and the negatives. If it's positives, it's good because you would like to include some of the things from your past to your future. But if it has been negative, then you try to see and overcome your negatives or your shortcomings so that you can ultimately select the best course of action to reach your ultimate objective. So it's regarding your future. It's never of the past. Planning is always about future. All the managers here try to make predictions or assumptions. For what? For the future. We all know future is always uncertain. It is said to be future is uncertain. Now we are facing this phase of pandemic that's COVID-19. Did anyone dream that such a pandemic is going to arise in 2020, 2019, 20? No. But we have to face it. So we, we are never very sure in the future, but we have to keep ourselves alert as to how we are going to meet the things or meet the situations what is there in the future. Without keeping yourself prepared for it, you will be totally collapsed, if you have not planned for properly. Now, even after so much of planning is done to meet the situation of COVID-19, somewhere something goes short. So many shortcomings you can see. But even then, they try to rectify, have corrections in their planning strategy. Looking into the situation, they try to change out their plans. For, for a long period, we had lockdown, then they relaxed. Step by step, they started relaxing the lockdown periods. Now they have given certain guidelines as to how you have to uh, be when you are there in public places or when you are moving about. So when future is very uncertain, you have to always look into how, what are the situations you might face in the future. You have to assume, predict certain things and then select your course of action. Looking into the next one, that's planning is continuous. Planning is said to be a continuous process. It's a never ending process, right? For, uh, for all the planning, what you do, what you aim at, your ultimate aim is to find out the best one, best plan for your best or selecting the best course of action. Now, you can just take the example. If you, as a student, if as a student, uh, you after your, uh, if you are a SSLC passed out, now the results are out, SSLC results are out, now, as an SSLC passed out student, he will always have a confusion in mind as to what next, whether I should be going in for arts stream or I should be going in for commerce stream or shall I be going for science stream. So he will be having a confusion in mind. Finally, ultimately after looking into his interest, he has selected a particular stream he comes in for the commerce stream. Once he's taken up commerce as a subject in PUC, next, for his degree, again, there are so many alternatives available. He has to select 
out of that alternative one best suited for him he plans to go in for doing his bcom next after bcom can you stop in the present situation how much ever qualified you are it's not sufficient job opportunities are becoming harder to be found so you have to keep on upgrading updating yourself so after you finish your bcom he has to go in for continuing his masters after that what maybe he can try for getting a job after he has secured a job is it sufficient no in his job he has to upgrade its upgrade or go into the higher level higher positions so you see here at any point of time your planning for your future is never ended until and unless you all are there planning is a continuous process it goes on and on at every situation whatever you are going to face coming to the next one planning involves decision making so planning is nothing but you have to decide it is choice making choice making out of what out of the various alternatives whatever you have got out of the various alternatives you try to finalize or come into a conclusion or try to select the best you have to decide in life you cannot be stuck at one particular time you have to take a decision at a particular point of time once you have finished or passed out your puc next you have to take a decision fast you cannot just wait okay now i am not in a position to think let me take time okay take your time but not too long a time it's going to be wasted so for at any particular time you need to decide the decision making has to be done among the various alternatives you are trying to select choose the best one to choose the best one now when there are, there are alternatives way of doing a job what is to be done you have to analyze and evaluate it to do one particular job there may be various ways when you are trying to analyze and evaluate it analyzes each one in one particular job how many jobs you can sub split it up split it up into small components once you have split it up try to evaluate what is right and what is wrong only after properly evaluating it can you be putting it into practice or implement it so before a plan can be actually implemented you have to evaluate you have to analyze it and then evaluate it before it can be put it into implementation because once it's implemented you cannot have changes so any changes whatever you have to make has to be done when before it can be actually implement, implemented that's by analyzing and evaluating the various courses of action what is there to achieve your ultimate targets so at any point of time you cannot fall short of reaching your ultimate objective organizational objectives everyone's efforts all those who are involved in an organization everyone's efforts are moving towards where moving towards the same one target one objective so when everyone's uh, efforts time energy everything goes on in one direction it should not never go a waste so you have to see to it that it it comes out being a successful plan here you try to find out the best one by what by analyzing and evaluating it last one b planning is a mental process so planning is said to be a mental process or a mental exercise it's said to be a mental process or a mental exercise planning is an intellectual process intellectual is what regarding your mind it is thinking it's a thinking process for planning it's just not enough that you ordinary think in the ordinary course you have to have higher thinking because here you are planning for the whole organization it's not about you alone it's concerned about the whole organization whoever is working within the frame of the organization so when it's taken as whole 
as a team, as one organization, then you have to have high thinking and whatever you get it into or the final plan is done previously only I've discussed here. It's by evaluating and analyzing the plan. Now, how can this be done? How can it be evaluated and analyzed? You have to scan through the business environment. May it be the legal environment, the technological environment, political environment, everything plays an important role. The society plays an important role. You cannot do something which is jeopardizing the goodwill of the society. So when you are taking all or scanning, having a scan of the business environment, can you come out with the best course of action. Now, a person who is, do, who is a planner and he is scanning the business environment should have the intelligence, right? Intelligence is needed. All can't plan. Planning is said to be what? Is said to be thought processing. So, a person with good mental capacity of thinking, thought processing, an intellectual person who can study when he is given a case, when he is looking into a case, he can study the pros and cons of it, the positive and negatives of it. Once he has studied it, can he come out with the final plan? So, he or the person who does planning should be having a very clear mind. He should be having a very good and a clear mindset. Only then, if like if, if, is in, if a person is in tension and in that tensed environment is going to take up decisions, it's not going to work out. So, he should have a clear mind, a good clear mind, a good intellectual thinking. Only such person can plan or come out with a good plan. So, here we, had, we are focused on the features, the seven features. First one being planning focuses on achieving objectives. Planning is the primary function of management. Planning is pervasive. Planning is said to be futuristic. Planning is continuous. Planning involves decision making. And the last one being planning is a mental exercise. So I hope you are clear with the features of planning. Moving on to the next part of it, that is limitations of planning. Moving on to the limitations of planning. Now, it is difficult to manage operations without formal planning. You cannot operate things coolly. It cannot go smoothly. It cannot be effectively and efficiently sought out when you do not have a proper planning. Now, things always may not go according to your plans. You have thought for a plan, finalized it, but do you think it is going to be 100% su uh, successful? Sometimes no, okay? So it's, it uh, some always doesn't go according to the plan. Sometimes unforeseen events, okay? Unforeseen events and changes, it may be rise in the costs and prices. Next, some environmental changes or some events, government interventions, changes in the government policies. So there are so many things which might affect planning. Now plans need to be modified. If you have a rigid set of plans, what happens? It's difficult. So looking into all these changes which might affect your planning, you should be in a position to have changes. If it's not, then it's not going to work out. Now, if we cannot adhere to the, to the uh, to have changes in our plans, then why do we plan at all? When no changes can be done, it's too rigid, why do we plan? And it's not going to be successful. When you cannot have any changes, it's right? So, it's needed for us then to analyze the major limitations. Though it's got its own importance and features, we all have to look 
and to the drawbacks or the limitations of planning. Here, we are looking into the first point, planning leads to rigidity. Planning leads to rigidity. Now here, what do you mean by rigid? Rigidity is nothing but being still. It's being still or not flexible. Still is what? Become stiff. You might have seen situations sometimes, a child, it's up, it's up to some mischief. Just a small example, a child is up to some small mischief. The mother catches hold of the child and shouts at the child. That time, if the child is stubborn enough, though the mother is hitting the child or beating the child, the child doesn't move nor cries, just stands stiff. Shows its stubborn nature. Can mother take more severe action? No. So here too, this was an example. So here too, planning leads to rigidity. Rigidity is what being stiff, being still, or it's not flexible. When plans are not flexible, it's not going to work out. You have to have flexibility as per the changing requirements, the changes in the NY business environment, when you are not able to incorporate all those things, it becomes rigid and it, it might go a waste. Your plans might go a waste. If the plans what you set are rigid and you blindly follow the plans, then there is no change. I mean, there are no chances of changes. You know plan is not going to work out. But even then, because the top level management has set the plan, you are just following it. Ultimately, result is nothing. There is no improvement. You are not uh, looking at catering to the, catering to your objective. It's going to go a waste, right? So at that, that time, you, can, you should have, when you are setting, I mean, coming out with a plan, it should be such that you are trying to achieve some specific goals. That goal should be there in your mind, that objective should be there in your mind. If that itself is not achieved, what's the use of your plan? When you cannot have changes as per the asking requirements or the changing requirements in the business environment, you are not able to make changes in your plans, it's going to be a waste. So it should never be too rigid, but sometimes plans are too rigid. They don't incorporate the changes, whatever is needed. Now, here you can just take an example. You have planned for a formal program in your institution. And suddenly you come to know that the guest whom you had set for has, has, is sick. So that person is not able to come to the formal program. Now, can, should you be cancelling the program and fixing it for a future date or should you be following on the same date? But there, one of the management person of the institution is very much rigid and he wants to stick on to the program with no changes at all. The guest is there or not, the program should continue. Will the program be successful? No. Without the guest, is a program successful? No. So if it has to be successful, you try to have adjustments in that little of flexibility in the date schedule. Just give a prior notice informing everybody that the program has to be rescheduled to a, or postponed to a future date. So plans, whatever is set for, has, should not be rigid. Next one comes in, planning may not work in dynamic environment may not work in dynamic environment.
Now, business environment is dynamic. When you're telling dynamic, means nothing is constant. It keeps on changing. Your business environment keeps on changing. Changes in technology. Here, you can just take an uh, example of earlier, you had the manually operated typewriters. Later on, that was taken place by the electronic typewriters. After a few more years, computers came into scene. As year went by, changes in the computer technologies, the latest, which can do things much faster. If you are still in that outdated or the old hand uh, operated typewriters, you cannot be facing the changes, the present changes cannot meet the standards of the present environment. So, when you are looking into the changes in the technology, you have to inculcate in your business environment. Changes in government policy, government policies keeps on changing. If you tell, no, I am not going to follow the policies, can your organization work? No, you are within that you cannot bypass the policies and work. So, you are within that structure. You are supposed to, you, are, you have to abide by the common policies. So, when you are coming out with plans, you have to look into all these things, the cha changes in technology, the changes in the government policy. Now, the organization has to constantly adapt itself to changes. If you are not in a position to adapt yourself, to the changes what is asked, then it's difficult for you to survive. You should be so easily adapting to the changes that you can reach your targets in a very easy manner. Political parties, if there's a change in the political party or if there's a natural calamity, now all these are unfortunate, you do not know political party changes suddenly or uh, some unforeseen uh, this one natural calamity occurs, you didn't know that calamity would have been occurring. So, when all these changes takes place, you should be in a position to incorporate yourself along with the changes. If you, are, you cannot, you cannot meet the business environment, the present business environment, then you cannot survive, then your planning does not work out. So, if your pl planning has to work out, you should be seeing that you can meet the unforeseen circumstances. If not, it's not going to work out and it will always be an obstacle, always act as an hurdle for what? For effective planning. So, when you cannot work or you may not work in the dynamic environment, where we say environment is, you know, when you are uh, talking of environmental changes taking place, then it's not going to work out. The next point being planning reduces, planning reduces creativity. Planning reduces creativity. Now, this is another as, um, obstacle coming your way, the limitation coming your way. If an activity which is usually done by who? Setting up the plans in an organization usually done by the top level. We have already dealt in the, dealt in the first chapter about the levels of management, the top level, the middle level and the lower level. So, among the three levels, the top level formulates plans. Formulate plans for whom? For the lower level. So, the major decisions regarding the planning is done by whom? By the top level. Next, what does, what does the other levels of management do? They just implement, put it into action. So, whatever decisions are taken by the top level are just implemented or followed by the middle level and the lower level. Now, here what happens? As a result, 
who is taking the decision for whom the top level is just taking the decisions does the middle level or the lower level have any chance of deciding no they are just for management are just following the plans what are put it are planned by the top level they are just implement or the plans have been implemented and they are just following as per the guidelines put in by their top level so here they have neither any chance for showing their creativity or taking any initiative so what happens their creativity is absolutely lost they lose interest sometimes they don't show 100% interest in their jobs or they are not working with full effectiveness or full of efficiency because when they have no right to take up any or deviate from their plans they cannot make any changes in the plans it becomes a boredom to them just to follow it so here it jeopardizes their creativity next if you are coming to it is planning involves huge costs planning involves huge costs when we plan you know it takes a lot of money huge costs are involved next when uh, huge costs are involved in what form when you are formulating the plans it may be in times or in terms of money or in terms of your time and you know we have already told earlier planning is not everyone's cup of tea right so the person who is going in for planning has to have the intellectual capacity the mental capacity to think for what he is going to do in advance to achieve the targets or the goals right so when that is involved you need sometimes to appoint for professional or experts who are good in planning when you appoint professional expert do you think it's easy no because cost is involved there the person whom whomever you are going to appoint as a professional expert who is good in planning has to be well paid so all these adds to what will add to cost so when you can form it to formulate the plan it will ultimately lead to increasing your cost your time and effort moving on to the next part planning is time consuming planning is said to be time consuming sometimes plans to be drawn they take so much of your time that there is no time left for the actual implementation because you have to look into so much so many pros and cons the positives and negatives that you have taken a long time in planning when you take a long time for planning there is lesser time left for its implementation so here now if uh, for example we can just take a simple example a person is sick okay sudden he gets a cardiac arrest and you have to what you have to do you have to immediately hospitalize him if a person in your family is affected by cardiac arrest you have to immediately admit him now instead of admitting him if you take time to think as to which hospital and where and what and who all those things other things you go to think about what happens it becomes time consuming if time passes by there are chances that the person may expire on his way to the hospital itself so for all those things quick action need to be taken which is not possible here you when you are drawing up your plans only when you are looking into all the plus points and the negatives before you can actually come into the actual course of action you look into the various alternatives out of the alternatives then you choose the proper plan and before you can actually implement it you analyze it then evaluate it all these processes will be taking a long time so finally what has happened 
for its actual implementation, time left is very less. So planning is said to be time consuming. Coming to the last point here, planning does not guarantee success. Does not guarantee success. Only when plans are properly drawn up and implemented, it is successful in an organization. So what has to be done? It has to be properly drawn up and implemented. Now sometimes what happens is, you just rely on your previous plans. Okay, previously you have tried and have been using that plan and you want to follow the same thing. Does it guarantee success? Absolutely no. Last year it might have worked out, but when there is a change in the business environment, when there is a changes in the consumer behavior, when there's a change in the market for that particular product, when there's diversity in the product, there are so many aspects, so many things affecting your business environment. That business environment, each aspect has to be seen. When you cannot look into the needs of each and every aspect, what happens? Your plan might fail. So there is no 100% guarantee when you're already going to use or formulate the same plans which you had tried earlier. There should be changes as per what? As per the needed, needed. What is needed at that particular hour? Looking into that, what is needed right now for what? We have to formulate the plans for what? For your future. So when you're formulating it for your future course of action, you have to look into all the aspects, take all the aspects of business environment into consideration and go forward. Only then that plan is going to be successful. Here, it provides, after having looked into all the points or all the points of limitations, we can come to the conclusion that planning is not useless if what? if it is done with caution. We just need to be cautious before you can implement a plan. If you are cautious enough, looking into the future course of action, you implement a plan, you can move towards success. Now here, it just provides, planning is just providing you a base for analyzing your future course of action, but it does not provide a particular solution for all your problems. Remember that students, each problem has its own solution, different solutions to each problems. If you're just going to take an example, you are with your accountancy, the first test is approached and the first, chap uh, first uh, test, there are three chapters for your examination in accountancy. You have got not-for-profit organization, you have got the fundamentals of partnership, and you have got admission of partnership. Now, those three chapters, when problems are asked, you have to understand the problem and work the particular solution for that particular problem. Not-for-profit organization problem, you cannot give an answer from partnership, admission of a partner or if a problem is asked from admission of partner, the solution of uh, not-for-profit organization cannot be solved there. It's going to be wrong. So here when your planning is providing a base, you have to analyze it and then implement, put, put it into practice. So what is the final verdict is? You just try to tell that whatever solutions are given, it is for that particular problem or that particular course of action only, not for all the cases. So with this, we come to the conclusion for the limitations of planning. So in today's class, we had taken up with the introduction, introduction of planning, the meaning of planning, the definition of planning, the importance of planning, the features and the limitations.